Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Databricks video. Today's video would be a short one and it would be about storing PII data securely in Databricks. We are going to use sorting with a natural key to make our passwords and other sensitive data more secure. As always, we are going to use streaming data for our example. We are going to see how to create dynamic views and allow access of specific columns to certain users. So, let's get down to it. Okay, we are here in our Databricks environment and this is the notebook we are going to use in order to improve security. So, the first topic is add a salt to the natural key. To mitigate the damage that a hash table or a dictionary attack could do, we salt the passwords. According to the documentation, a salt is a value generated by a cryptographically secure function that is added to the input of hash functions to create unique hashes for every input, regardless of the input not being unique. A salt makes a hash function look more deterministic, which is good as we don't want to reveal duplicate passwords through our hashing. Salting before hashing is a very important as it makes dictionary attacks to reverse the hash much more expensive. So, uh, salting is nothing else than actually attaching a string to the column that we want to encrypt. For example, let's say we are going to encrypt this column, device ID. I'm going to use the IoT uh, data that we used in, our, in the previous videos. And let's say we have this column, device ID, that we want to encrypt, right? If we use this hash function here, we provide the device ID as a string, 256, and then we are doing the same but attaching a string to device ID. Now, this is the thing. So the thing, let me run this command here. Uh, so this, although we have device ID, if we scroll to the right, you will see that's, uh, that's uh, the hashing value without uh, using a salt. And this is the value uh, using a, 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 attaching a string. So, in theory, this value can be reversed and the, uh, the attacker can uh, uh, generate the password or the device ID in this case. But this one, so it's much more expensive and difficult to do because we have added, we have attached a string to the device ID. So it's much more difficult for the attacker, attacker to reverse this value and find the original one. So that's why we use salting for passwords, right? We can uh, use uh, UDF. We can create a SQL user-defined function to register this logic to the current database under the name salt it has. This will allow the logic to be called by any user with appropriate permissions of this function. So create or replace function, salt it has, we pass the device ID and it returns a string. And this is actually, you know, the implementation. We has the device ID concatenated with this value. 256, and let's run this one and register our uh, function. So, and here, what we can do here is uh, actually test the results. If your SQL UDF is defined correctly, the assert statement below should run without an error. So, the key, the salt key here is just a test. Uh, you can use whatever, you know, string you want. Uh, I suggest don't use just test, but this is an example, apparently. So select, uh, and then we have this this value. Yeah, using uh, also adding the salt key here, and then we collect the data. We get the data back, and then the same thing using the salt it has user defined function that we created up here, and if we run this one, all tests passed, right? So because uh, you can see it's the same thing, uh, the UDF provides the same results as this one here. 
which is expected. Apparently, we didn't do anything complex. We just defined a function that everyone can use when coding. Here, we define a function for processing incremental batches. So we are going to use this user-defined function in our code. Uh, and so here is the data. And then using streaming data, so spark.readStream, we read the table. And then here we can use the uh, user-defined function, solved it has. We pass the argument and the parameter, and we define this as new ID. And then dot write stream, the checkpoint available now, and that's the target table. So if we run this, let's run this one. And then we should expect to see data here, right? Yeah, you can see the new ID, the hash value of device ID plus the test uh, string that we use here when we created our function. Pretty simple, but that's how you use a SQL user defined function in your code. Let's move forward. We have the duplication with window functions. We are going to use uh, the salted uh, the salted uh, key here uh, in this logic. So we are pre previously explored some ways to remove duplicate records using Delta Lake's merge uh, syntax. We can update or insert records based on keys, matching new records with previously loaded data. We can use drop duplicates, but drop duplicates actually is when we have exact duplicates. Now, it's uh, very unusual in at work to use drop duplicates. You, sometimes you have to use it, but usually you need to apply some logic and only pick the records you want. And usually we do that with uh, an analytical function or window function. And here, for example, rank or row number. How can uh, we can use this window function here? Window dot partition by device ID ordered by timestamp descending. You have to import the window uh, function here and the uh, SQL functions as well. So here we create an extra column called rank and uh, we are using rank over this window here and the same for row number. Now if we do that you will see in the data that uh, we have this ranking here and the row number. Usually, in most cases, we use row number. So essentially, if we add this one and this one back, so this is how it is usually performed at work. So we select only where row number equals one, uh, depending on the logic, and the logic is defined in the partition by and in the order by, right? So that's an example. There is no business logic here, apparently, but just demonstrating how it works. And then we have implementing streaming ranked row number deduplication. As we saw previously, when apply merge logic with structure streaming job, we need to use for its batch logic. Uh, recall that while we are inside the streaming micro batch, we interact with our data using batch syntax, which is pretty, pretty useful. Uh, it's amazing, actually. This means that if we can apply our ranked window logic within our for each batch, we can avoid their restriction throwing an error. So remember, you cannot use uh, wrong number in streaming data. It doesn't work like that. Remember, when we are using, uh, when we have streaming data, we cannot apply window logic unless it ha it is based on a timestamp column or something like that but uh, but if you want uh, to use row, n row number or ranking then you you need to use for its batch function anyway so here we read the uh, data from this table we filter and device id has to be different to zero and then we create a new column, a salted column based on device ID, again what we did before, called alt 
id all underscore id so that's how we can use salt salting here and this salted df here we are going to use it in our merge statement the updated window logic is provided below know that uh, this is being applied to its micro batch to result in a local rank df that will be used for merging for our merge statement we need the old underscore id and uh, when not match insert all okay that's fine so let's create a target uh, table if we haven't already and here is our logic so again window function based on alternative id the um, the hast id ordered by timestamp here we have in the for each but uh, um, function in salted underscore absurd we use the data frame we use the rank uh, window function here we filter and we create a temporary view and here is our SQL merge statement using this view that we created here when matched and message ID different to the target then update otherwise insert let's run this one as well and here is our logic salted df right dot write stream dot for each but output mode update checkpoint trigger dot start and we can see the data to the target table okay or alternative id based on the merge statement that we provided dynamic views now dynamic views is when we are going to allow uh, allow user or group identity acls to be applied to data at the column level or row level database administrators can configure data access privileges to disallow access to a source table and only allow users to query a redacted view users with sufficient privileges will be able to see all fields while restricted users will be shown arbitrary results as defined at view creation to we obfuscate the columns we want to be redacted so create or replace view redacted view as we uh, we provide a select statement here message id device id and then case when each member of this group then show the uh, column value else display redacted and this is the rpm column and then the same thing is member it belongs to this group then we display the value other ways redacted so this is pretty simple let's do that actually let's create a new group and see and then let's see if we can see the data or we can see redacted let's select from this view yeah as you can see we cannot see the original values because we don't belong to this group here test we have to uh, we have to add our users to this group usually this there is an admin who is doing this job but you can do it here if you go to user settings then identity and access groups uh, add group let's call it test and then in your test group click on that actually click here add members and that would be you have to select your email right okay and if we go back to my workspace then in theory if we rerun this query we should be able to see the data because now our user belongs to this group yeah we can see the original data it's that simple and you can apply more complex case when statements and display other values or whatever or you can display or the user can see only you know a range of values and then another range you can display some a string or something like redacted or whatever so this is how you can apply security on views as i mentioned guys that was a pretty quick and simple demo the purpose here was to display quickly how to use salting with hashing for your passwords and how you can build dynamic views with extra security 
simple things today. Hope you enjoyed it. Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.